the songwriter has to, or, or the vocalist, in this case, Dwight, has to decide, how am I singing this? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the channel. I'm Don. This is Rockin' a Country, which is what I'm going to be doing today, as always. Dwight Yoakam's Ain't That Lonely Yet. And uh, I don't think I know this song, so we're going to find out what Dwight's got for us. And it was requested by Plano Jag. So Plano Jag, shout out to you. There may be some numbers that YouTube has automatically put behind your name now. Everybody's got numbers after or in front of unless you customize it yourself and remove them, which you can do easily. But in any case, Plano Jag, shout out to you. Here we go. It's a year of the cat feel to it. You keep calling me on the telephone. You say you're all alone. Well, that's real sad. And you keep leaving. No stuck on my door. Guess you're hungry for us more. Oh, oh, I like that. Shoot, man. I'm just going to bask in that for a second. Because we've all had relationships in life where we wished either we'd said something or thought of something. But it does capture what we were feeling at the time. Sometimes songs confirm what you went through decades ago, for example, in life. And sometimes they're like, oh, maybe I'm guilty of something. And the, and the songwriter pointed that out, un, not knowing me. But, all right, let's come on back. He ain't that lonely yet because she hurt him so bad. He's like, uh-uh, I ain't opening up to you again. But for a guy to be singing this, it's perfect. Won't it was this spider in my bed. I got caught up in her wind. Yeah. Love and light. It's fun to change around my heart and soul. Never to let go. He's blaming her though. Life is lived by trial and error, and he found out everything she does brings him down. But you have to go through it to figure that part out. He's singing this really well, too. You know, I, I marvel in songs. Yeah, marvel might be the right word. I mean... Because when you put a song together and you hear it, I mean, I know this from experience in life where 
when I was younger, I never gave thought really thought to songs. I'd hear lyrics, I'd hear guitar jams, I'd whatever, and I would be like, oh, I would feel that part of it. But when you analyze it and you have a lifetime of experience, as I do now, and you see not only what's in songs, but the songwriter has to, or, or the vocalist, in this case Dwight, has to decide, how am I singing this? Am I gonna, do I want it to be a forlorn feeling, like a hardcore forlorn feeling? Do I want to be a little bit chippier just so people maybe can enjoy the song a little more in concert? Like, there's a lot that goes into how do I want to portray this song? And the producer and band and so forth, and early in your career, the label will have something to say about that, but that comes through the producer usually. But it's one of these things where, like, when I said Dwight is singing this really well, I'm looking for sort of like agreement, consistency with the meaning of the song, the instrumentation, how that's going along, the tempo, how different instruments may be coming in and going out that they're not startling. Because this was a consistent sadness he was feeling in this. But he was, he was resolved. I ain't that lonely yet. You hurt me so bad. I'm staying put. So if you have an inconsistency in the music where it's like, hey, let's bring this one in, drop it out, do this, there's going to be this conflict for the listener without identifying that that conflict is in place. So it's sort of like in regular writing, like when you're reading a book or an article or something, if when the tempo picks up, let's say you're reading a novel, I don't read novels, I read nonfiction exclusively, but it's still the same whether it's fiction or nonfiction, the principles apply equally. When you have something that's taking place very quickly, you're trying to portray a sense of quick movement, maybe it's a battle scene in a war, you use shorter sentences. You make the action, you make it move more quickly. It gives the reader, without necessarily knowing it, the feel that things are happening quickly. So you economize your words. You don't have long academic drawn out sentences to illuminate like two guys shooting at each other in a war or a tank running over, whatever. That is about you could call it internal consistency. And that's what happened here. There wasn't an inconsistency in the instrumentation and the way Dwight was singing it. So I never took music theory, but the longer you sort of think about music, the more you can make some connections. So Plano Jag, that was a good recommendation. All right, what am I getting? And plus this, (laughs) what he's talking about, I could relate to it. I mean, when somebody destroys you and then they want to come back to you, you're like, oh, hell no. No, 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 no. I ain't that lonely yet. He didn't say it in a mean way either. He was still hurt. But he also blamed her. She cast a web. There was a spider in his bed. And there were, and she cast this web and he had to get himself out of it. And some women are bad news. Some guys are bad news. Sometimes both. Sometimes neither. It just works out. And so maybe he's just saying the truth that she cast the cast a web she was dishonest about things and hurt him and he's like no 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 no, baby no i ain't taking you back i ain't risking it so all right this kills me to say this number but it's an 8.9 it always does because it doesn't go in the playlist of nines and above but that was a song uh that i could relate to in ways but it was it was very well executed too so There you go. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed that. Have a great day. I'll see you on another video. Keep rocking the country.